All right, Mr. Charles, we'll make it simple. TT here again. Welcome to another theory video. This theory video is on Cape Computer Science Unit 2. I hope you learned something. All right, the next part of this module is searches on source. Now, this is code also. Um, remember, I told you all, within the two questions, question one and question two, question one will be about um, stacks and queues and data types and whatnot. And the next question will be about searches and sorts inside there they're going to ask you one code question where you have to actually write out the code for something the code could either be a stack it could be a queue it could be a combination of stacks and queues or it could be a search on it or it could be a sort so wherever you see code here you you know how to learn it because it could it, it could come from anywhere but 90 percent of the time all the other questions are going to be diagrams that you're going to have to either draw or explain right so the different sorts I could have, you could have a bubble sort, you could have a selection sort. So bubble sorts. A bubble sort works like this. We don't need the noise. So it will compare every two um, spaces. And if the number is smaller, it will push it to the end. And then it will drop the um, the search range because basically you're just trying to get the smallest number to the end, meaning keep the biggest number to the right, smallest to the left. So it will keep comparing every adjacent pair. Um, so let me show you it like in slow motion. If I have the numbers 5, 1, 4, 2, and 8, I'm going to compare these two, determine if the second one is smaller. If it is smaller, I will swap. So the swap takes place because 5 is greater than 1. Then I'll go to the next pass. Which will compare the 5 and the 4. It'll check to see if they're going to swap. Cool, good. 25 will swap. Nice. Then I'll check the 5 and the 2. I'll check them. Do they have to swap? Nope. Yes, they do. The 2 and the 5 have to swap. And I'll check the 5 and the 8. And then it will determine if it'll have to swap. And then by default, the highest number will be to the right hand side. Then it's going to have to go through a second pass. So it's going to compare the 1 and the 4. Do they have to swap? No, because 1 and 4, 1 is less than 4. Good. So then compare the 4 and the 2. Do they have to swap? No. Yes, they have to because the 2 and the 4 have to swap. Then I'll compare the 4 and the 5. Do they have to swap? No. 4 and 5. Good. And then it actually won't compare the 5 and the 8 because we already established that the 8 is the highest number. And that's how our bubble sort works. The code works like this. You create one loop on the outside, one for loop, which is going to go to the size of the array. So you're going to get the size and you're going to get an array. So you're going to check i is equal to 0, i is equal to n minus 1, which is the size. Why are you using size minus 1? It's because you don't want to go all the way to the end of the array. You want to go to the last possible value. So you have to put the n minus 1. Because um let's say the array is two three four one zero one two three four right the size of the array is um yeah so n minus one will say that you'll go up to um you're gonna go up to here right which is the size right then you're going to say 4j is equal to 0, which is the second loop, right? So this is the loop that's going to go through the whole array. And then this loop here is going to do the comparisons each time of each two. So this loop here is going to compare the location of j, which is going to start up at 0, but it's going to go up to 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever. And it's going to compare n minus i minus 1. i is going to be 0. So it's going to compare this last value here. 
So the n minus i minus 1, this is where students always make the mistakes most of the time. Um, but basically, you're going to uncram this off, right? If you don't cram this off, you would kind of... It'd be easiest if you just cram it off. But this is the only thing that they could change most of the time to do the n minus i minus 1. And then it's going to do a comparison if the location that you're on right now, which is here, is greater than the location that you're on, which is here, which is the j plus 1, which is from this for loop here will be 0 plus 1, which will be the first one. You swap them. You call the swap function, the swap function will do it. If you have to write out the actual swap function, you, just, you should be able to write out a swap by now in upper 6, right? So the explanation for it, there's an outer loop. Uh, many times it's asking questions about the explanation of how it works. So the outer loop goes through the whole array from start to finish and decreases the maximum index each time, basically meaning that it will start off looking for this value here, but then it will lock that off, then it will lock that off, then it will lock that off, then lock that off, then lock that off until you have only one value inside. Once you have one value inside, that means automatically this will be the highest going down. So the goal of this one is to check through the whole array and decrease the maximum index. The inner loop, however, checks every two items to see if the second one is bigger than the first. If it's true, then it swaps. So this is your six mark explanation for our bubble sort. Thanks for watching the theory video. If you learned something, give it a like, give it a share, subscribe, do whatever you have to do. And if you want practical applications of the things, feel free to check out any of my classes. You can find them on my website at makeitsimplett.com. I have classes for all different subjects from CSEC IT, CAPE IT, CAPE Computer Science, and many different tutorial videos that you could find on this channel. So um, thank you very much and look out for the next video that is here or here because I have all the theory videos for all the subjects.